We're going to meet another one of our distinguished jurors now. Actually, I have met her before, but it's been a very long time. Please welcome Nilita Tru uh, from the Eastman School of Music. Come on over, Nilita. Now, I have met you before. It's been a very long time, but you judged me in the MTNA competition in 1981. I still, courtesy of my mother who saves these things, I still have the comment sheets from you and, and everything. I remember your handwriting and everything. And then I played for you in a master class that same summer in Dallas oh my at goodness. SMU. So it's, so it's nice to see you again. <laughs> Where you, how, have, how have the past 35 years been for you? Oh, been okay? It, I'd say they've been wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> We're so happy to have you here in Fort Worth finally as a judge at one of our competitions. Uh, you, you have been such a legendary teacher. Uh, first at the University of Maryland, of course, which is how I knew you first as, as, a, as a teacher there. You know my whole life. Teacher. And I do. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, uh, at the Eastman yeah. School. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Maggie Estes, uh, our director of marketing and PR, tells me that you were a real hit in the jury symposium this morning because you were telling them about your very first performance with orchestra, which was with no less than the Chicago Symphony. Symphony. Yes. That's quite a way to start. How did that all happen? Well, it was a national Competition and uh, it was mainly done by tape, and I just happened to win. And it was it <laughs> just was, happened to win. Maybe was, maybe you were the best. Well, <laughs> it could have been that. <laughs> but it was it was just an extraordinary experience for me. Do you remember how you felt that day, or what it was like? Well, it was actually an unusual time of my life because my mother was dying at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know what to do because I thought maybe I shouldn't go. And but she oh, she I insisted, see. and uh, I think she really willed herself to live long enough until after it was to over for you and, to have yeah, been able to because, do that because she died a couple of weeks after. Oh, after I, uh, after I did that. So what that a beautiful was, story. Yeah, it was very meaningful uh, for me at the time because she was expected to die earlier and she was determined not to mess up my <laughs> opportunity and it, just like her to do that. So Fantastic it was story. very special. Where did you grow up? I'm, I'm trying to suss out why you, were, why you had never played with an orchestra before then because I know firsthand that you're a brilliant pianist. I'm from Bozeman, Montana. Not, not many orchestras. Not many symphony orchestras, <laughs> <laughs> at least then in Montana. It has perked up quite a bit, but it's not the cultural center of the world. But it's a great place to grow up. Fantastic. And the wonderful thing is that uh, women, when I was a child, could go away and study in major schools, but then they were expected to come back and marry the farmer next door. You didn't do that. No, but <laughs> I was able to have really fine teachers mm -hmm. while I was growing up. Oh, I see that's what you're whole, getting to. Yeah, they, that's the whole point. You had, teach, you had teachers yeah. who had been away yeah, yeah. and then had come back. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, one in particular who mm -hmm. was really uh, outstanding. Mm -hmm. And you, you went then to the University of Michigan, yes. right? Yes. My goodness, I have no secrets here. You have no secrets. <laughs> in fact, you know, when I, w when I was in college, it, I just happened to have to play at one point the Paul Crested Saxophone Sonata. So I was looking for a recording of it, and it was you uh, with Donald Sinta. <laughs> Sinta. That was the yeah. first time I ever heard mm -hmm. you play, mm -hmm. actually play at all. But you then went to Juilliard from there and yeah. then to Peabody. To study with Leon mm -hmm. Fleischer. Mm -hmm. So that, you've had some great teachers oh, in I've your life. Oh, I've been very lucky. In been your very, life. Very, very lucky. And then where did France come in? Because you spent some time in France well. As it was well. a Fulbright. Mm -hmm. I applied for a Fulbright and that was uh, an extraordinary experience because um, I was able to sign up for the class with Nadia Boulanger. And that was something I will never forget. She was not your piano teacher. No. Though. That mm -hmm. was Julie Gentil. Or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but Nadia Boulanger, let's stay with her a minute mm -hmm. because she's one of my favorite topics, yeah. actually, yeah. because she sort of really is the mother of American music, basically. Oh, I mean, uh, Aaron Copland went to her. Exactly. And, and, and what seems so special about Nadia Boulanger is that she got American composers over their inferiority complex about being American and yeah I never thought of it that way that's very and she interesting isolated that uh -huh, American uh -huh, voice and uh -huh, Aaron Copland and uh -huh. encouraged that and nurtured it uh -huh. so we might not 
really have an American tradition in composing oh, without think, her. I didn't realize that we owed mm. that to her also. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've just always sort of yeah, thought so. Yeah. Aaron that makes Copeland, sense. I think, that really so. makes sense. What was yeah. she like? What was a class with her like? Well, she was very demanding, mm -hmm. and uh, which is not surprising because her standards were so high. As a matter of fact, she announced to us that during spring break, when we were not going to have the class, she had been invited to come to England for some professional reason. Mm -hmm. And so we were all to change our, our spring break to another week. And I had just, previous to that, mm -hmm. signed up for a, a trip to Russia during <laughs> spring break. So I went up to her after class <laughs> and told her about this conflict. And she said, well, if you were really serious about your music, you would not take a vacation. <laughs> I have never had a vacation. Stravinsky never had a vacation. So I don't think you should take a vacation. <laughs> did you go to Russia? Yes, I did. <laughs> you, you took your vacation. Because <laughs> I knew she'd be away <laughs> before. <laughs> so it, it, that worked out OK. She, she didn't seem to hold it against me. <laughs> Nalita, you've had a wonderful uh, career, both as a pianist and a, and a teacher. How did, how did teaching start for you? You've been such an influential teacher in America. How did it all start for you? Do you, do you think you fell into it, or did you, did you intentionally build a career for yourself as a teacher? How do you think that all happened? Uh, well, a lot of it was just good luck. <laughs> uh, and that, because I was studying with Fleischer, I, um, well, no, first of all, I had a job at the University of Kansas, and you mm -hmm. could get that, you could get a job with a master's degree then. Mm -hmm. Now it's not possible not anymore. Possible, you have to have, right. the, have the doctorate. And I sort of planned out that I'd teach for two years and then try for the Fulbright. Mm -hmm. And then my brother said, well, of course, you're going to go on for the doctorate now. And I said, no way, no way. <laughs> I said, I would only get the doctorate if Leon Fleischer were teaching at a school that offered it. And he said, well, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so that's how Made I, to order yeah, then. That's how I went to study with him. And of course, that was an exceptional opportunity. He's, he's just an incredible musician. I've seen him in master classes, and I mm -hmm. quite agree with mm. you. But but tell our audience what he has that no other teacher has. He well, is a very special man. Well, of course, since I don't know all teachers, and <laughs> there might be, <laughs> might be others. But um, I went to study with him the year that he had to quit playing because of his mm -hmm. arm, as I said. And um, that was very difficult for him. Because and he it, was still a young man. And really. he didn't have the conducting mm. then. He He just had nothing and except the teaching and of course we had lessons every week and but he never he never showed what he was going through but it was quite clear to us that it had to be just the worst time of his life but then he got into the conducting and then gradually he was able to do he didn't want to do the left hand uh, repertoire mm -hmm. because that would mean that he'd given up on the two hands so mm -hmm. he didn't do that for a long time but then finally he did start some of that, and eventually the, the right hand came back enough mm -hmm. so that he was able to play. But it was it was really tragic. Maybe him. the teaching was a lifeline mm -hmm. for him in those years well, when I think he, he had no other musical activity. I think he enjoyed it because he was so intense in the teaching, and he was he was kind. He was not uh, difficult um, at all, and a lot of famous teachers are, so are extremely mm -hmm. difficult, and so it was. It was a joy, but at the same time, all of us were feeling so bad for him right. because he was going through a personal, a true kind of hell, exactly. not being able to play exactly. the piano, but the, everything got better, so I'm glad about that. Thanks to a lot of therapy and Botox, yeah, and, yeah, and Botox yeah. is sort of a miracle for, for focal dystonia. Yeah, he tried everything, everything. And, and he was very, very open to that. And, uh, you know, the yeah. thing about him is he's had to be so tough because he tried everything for 40 years yeah, before yeah. that finally yeah, worked and, yeah, and yeah, opened that yeah, hand up. Yeah. So it's, it's amazing how, how resilient that man is. Oh, I don't know how, how he survived mm -hmm. it. I really mm -hmm. don't. It just, it just was a horrible thing to happen mm -hmm. to someone like him. Mm -hmm. But what, what an extraordinary teacher. Oh, my Great goodness. Great opportunity. Oh, it, was, it was just uh, Wonderful. I'll, of course, never forget it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've been so in demand as a teacher yourself. How in the world have you found time to practice? I well, mean, your teaching schedule has been so active all these years. How have you found time to well, keep well, this going? Well, piano teachers in colleges and universities and conservatories, 
don't teach all day. So you do have half a day to, <laughs> to practice. So that works out very well. Good. It does work out very well. I'm so glad we've finally gotten you here in Fort Worth as a as a competition. Oh, juror. this has been such a pleasure. Fantastic! Really. You'll have to come back sometime. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. We're going to let you get back to work now. That's right. And we'll do the same. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Nalita.